give me a sense, if you will, Mr. Wolf, about the way this business works. Take Ginter Guillaume, for example. How many years did it take from the moment you sent him till the moment you got the first report from him? Mm, it was quite different. Uh, you know, it was not, uh, I think, typical but some of uh, very important agents, especially in the intelligence or counterintelligence services, they came themselves and offered and brought uh, interesting information to come in contact in, to get money. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not typical. The typical way for one kind of uh, our uh, agents was a long way. They uh, left GDR as students, maybe, or were recruited as students in Germany West, especially after the events of 68. Mm -hmm. You remember this situation. And then had a long way, and now uh, not uh, every uh, came to the aim. Could you wait like even 9, 10, 15 years of course, for an agent to give some food? Yes, we did. And uh, another kind of agents were waiting for a special situation. Uh, this uh, leaders, leading, uh, we say, residents for a special situation, pre-war or war situation, and they never came to work. But uh, it was a hard task mm -hmm. to sit uh, under cover and to wait for tasks. You know, reading uh, a lot of stories written about you, I, got a, I came out with a sense that maybe uh, part of your success is due to the sense of commitment that you created in your agents, the, the fact that they knew that you do almost anything for them. Uh, Gabriela Agassi is one story that you deposited a certain amount of money every month in a bank account for her in East Berlin, even though she didn't want any salary. Uh, was it sheer kindness or a cold business calculation? No, I, I never felt, uh, especially with such kind of people uh, as only thinking in a cold way for an aim and uh, they had to do it and uh, use every method uh, to make them convinced. Uh, I had uh, to the most of their personal sympathy, feeling, not from the beginning. כן, והיו כמובן הנשים שגייס לשירותו, הנשים היפות שנשתלו במיטות מפתח, והנשים הפחות יפות שעליהן שלח וולף את סוכניו, פלוגות רומאו קראו להם, לתת אהבה ולקבל מידע. הן היו מזכירות, מנהלות לשכה או עובדות מחקר, כמו גבריאלה גסט שדיווחה לו מתוך הביון המערב גרמני. תמיד בגיל העמידה, בודדות ושלות לקשר. הרבה ציניות ומעט רומנטיקה הייתה כאן. Tragic uh, and, uh, examples of using this kind of uh, contact, personal contact, between uh, women and a man. But there are uh, nearly the same number of other examples. Uh, there was a re real love from both sides, and uh, the. We're happy and I think uh, are happy until now, have children, and if there will be no prose prosecution from the Western side, uh, I, I will not uh, idealize the intelligence work. But still, still correct me if I'm wrong, uh, most of these women had to be middle-aged, single, uh, maybe frustrated, and therefore ripe for the temptation by your agents, right? That was the basic some, theory. Some of them. I, I will not uh, say uh, the most of them. But uh, you are right, uh, a sp uh, kind of this woman. Uh, but they were in so important and interesting positions for uh, the intelligence service. Mr. Wolf, you never quite denied being a rather successful womanizer yourself, have you? And myself. Uh, no, I think I never used it in my intelligence work. Yourself, you had an image of a womanizer, right? I won't uh, disturb my, my image, but I think I'm a very normal man in this kind, and my diverse had no other reasons as uh, in uh, 
some other families. What would you need to know about me to recruit me to your service? To recruit you? Oh, it's uh, difficult to say, especially uh, with a view to the camera. But I think we will have a talk, a uh, longer time, and meet again, and find some point uh, of uh, consensus. It's a, it's, a, it's a main problem to find a consensus of interest. But what is the most important thing that you'd need to know, that you would want to recognize in a would-be spy who would work for you? The looks, the intelligence, the attentiveness, what? No, the most important will be for me your position. Have you any possibility to do anything uh, uh, for the service if I'm... And my motivation. Your motivation, of course, and readiness to do anything. <laughs> What do you think about Israeli Mossad? Is it truly the best intelligence service in the world? It is said, and uh, maybe uh, he was, and there are some important operation well known now, and they show that Mossad uh, was successful. The methods, uh, uh, I don't know. You don't and know? I, uh, no, I, I don't know how to call them and how to estimate because uh, <coughs> it's uh, impossible to compare. Have you had any contact with Israeli Mossad agents while in service? Maybe we had, but we didn't know that they, are, uh, they were <laughs> is a Mossad agents. You did have a meeting with a Mossad agent after you retired in this Yes, address. I had. I had, and we had a very uh, close and fine conversation. And uh, in some points, I think, a uh, near estimation about some points. האיש שפגש היה רפי איתן. מפגשים תכופים יותר היו לו כמובן עם אנשי אש"ף. היום זה באופנה, הוא מקפיד לציין. But what you did, Mr. Wolf, was to cultivate terrorist organizations, Palestinian terrorist organizations. Have you ever met Abu Nidal? I personally not. You know that your yes. service was taking care of him, right? Yes. Did you take part or did you know about the part that East Germany had in the making and the training of Black September? No, I... Uh, Personally not, but I would ask you be careful about conclusions. Of course, looking back, the different contacts to Arab or uh, especially this kind of organization has to be critical. But, uh, for example, the West German intelligence service during the time of leadership of the uh, current uh, foreign minister Kinkel had very close contact to the intelligence service of Saddam Hussein. And so did the United States, trade, and so did and Britain so they and did France. All. But it was a part of Cold War. So in retrospect, do you regret the fact that you helped them? In whichever way you did, but do you regret no, the fact but, that you helped them? Uh, you see, uh, looking back, you may say about a lot of things, better we didn't do it. Uh, uh, it was a result of this confrontation, the socialist countries were not on the side of Israel. What was your biggest success? The biggest success? My biggest success was when I retired from, from my job. <laughs> but I'm sure there is a moment in one's career that's considered the biggest success, the peak of your professional life, the moment when you said, I made it. This uh, greatest aim for, for every intelligence service to, to have, a, as the Americans say, the mool uh, on the other side, it becomes a great uh, success. And the Federal Intelligence Service and the Counterintelligence Service, too, became transparent mm -hmm. for us. And you knew things sometimes before the Chancellor here did? Pardon? 
Erich Honecker knew some information even before the West German Chancellor got it? Uh, yes, I think yes, because we got uh, the information from the teletype in the, in the foreign office, especially by a woman agent uh, recruited by Romeo. For example, or... A Romeo, a Romeo just is a young person that you sent, right? Yeah. To lower the people. Yes, it was uh, one of the examples. Or we had uh, this uh, NATO summary about the situation in the so socialist country prepared for the foreign ministers of the yearly foreign uh, minister conference, the NATO top conference, before the foreign ministers had it. Did it make you laugh? Yes, some kind, yes. in some time, yes. The elder part of the Stasi buildings. Mo Madrid Tayarim Menuse, who moved the car between the two shita she carsa, kailu lo haya meamudei atavich shela, kailu tamid shachna po an halat chavrat arakavot hamekomi. And now this uh, more big new building. This begins the part of. Uh, הוא קיבל אישור מיוחד מן השלטונות לנסוע איתנו אל מחוץ לשכונה. עדיין הוא מתגורר מרחק דקות מבנייני השטאזי, משטרת הביטחון הידועה לשמצה, ששירות הביון שלו היה חלק ממנה. Communications, the central communication was inside, yes. And of course the photo laboratories were here to, for information. And, so. and for forged uh, passports? No, another, it was another, in another district. Of course it was a part of frightening and after the change the haters was against disbelief. You were part, or maybe one of the leaders, of the darkest machinery of the East German regime. Uh, you sent people to die for the system, you sent people to kill for the system. And in this sense, maybe it's a little bit more difficult for you, for your conscience? Uh, first part of your question, I uh, think no one uh, was sent for die and no one was sent for killing. Of course, we, GDR and other socialist countries weren't states of justice, but I think not that all we did and what all people of response in this country did was a kind of injustice. We had a great hope and we failed. מאוד רצה שנבוא איתו לכאן, לבית הקברות הסוציאליסטי שבצד המזרחי. כל גיבורי חייו תמונים פה. רוזה לוקסנבורג וקרל ליפחנט, שהיו לסמלי הסוציאליזם הגרמני, ואחיו קונרד הבימאי, ואביו, שהיה רופא ומחזאי, וברח מן הנאצים ב-33. Sogar mehr als ich dachte jetzt. כמו עבור שופטיו, גם עבור הקומוניסטים הוותיקים הללו, מרקוס וולף הוא בעיקר סמל. כל כך מעט סמלים נותרו להם הרי. ארנסט טלמן, המנהיג הקומוניסטי שמת במחנה ריכוז, כבר מכוסה גרפיטי. אפילו לנין הקטן, שעד לא מזמן עוד הציץ מחצר השגרירות הרוסית, מתחבא עכשיו בתוך קופסת עץ, שלא להפריע לאשוח המתבקש. אומני שוליים מן השמאל התמקמו בחורבה הזו, תכלס שמה, בניסיון לבלום את גלוחי הראש. אך גם הם הופכים בהדרגה בעלי עסקים ומוכרי מזכרות, מתחרים על חלקות קרקע בהזדמנות. 
וסמל הקפיטליזם הגרמני מנצנץ ביוהרה מעל כולם, כמו דיווח נצחי על תוצאות המלחמה הקרה. You know, it seems that you always knew what tomorrow will bring. Uh, you said once that uh, the morning after reunification, they will knock on your door and it will not be the milkman. You knew you were going to be arrested. You knew you were going to be indicted. You knew you were going to be convicted. Do you know now that Marcus Wolf will end his career in jail? I have this hope, maybe to go to jail sometime, but not for six years. מרקוס וולף. בשבוע הבא, כך בוחרים שופט לבית המשפט העליון. אגב, ההחלטות המפתיעות של הוועדה למינוי שופטים והקריאות החוזרות להוציא את דיוניה מן המחתרת, מביאה עינת ברקוביץ' מבט מקרוב על אופן פעולתה של הוועדה. על הלובי שעושים המועמדים, על הטלפונים שמקבלים חברי הוועדה לבית ולמשרד, על הפעלת החברים ועל הווטו של השופטים עצמם, על כרטיס הכניסה למועדון היוקרתי הזה. עד כאן להערב, אנחנו מקווים שתהיו איתנו גם מן הצד השני של הפרסומת, רפי רשף כבר שם. ערב טוב. Yeah.